I'm going to do that swirl and echo it from the inside and end over where I started. And I'll do that same thing to the other direction. And it's starting to lead off to the side. That's great. I'm going to do one of these. And maybe I'll try the leaves now. And maybe one of these drop flowers where I'm going off of the edge. Let me tip, twist this just a little bit. Where I go off of the edge, I'll just imagine where that line would be back on the placement I'm working and come back on there. And here I am, I can probably go back to my spirals again. Again, I'll just imagine where it would come back on. Maybe I'll echo over that to get over here. Put a little leaf here. And I'll pretend there's a little spiral there. And another one there. And now I'm off the edge and I could come back on anywhere. I might come back over here and start to fill this in. So I'll just put a little spiral here and then maybe pretend there's part of a spiral there and then get back on and in my groove. Okay, I'm facing this kind of tight space. What should I put there? Maybe it could be another spiral or it could be another one of these flowers. I kind of like, it's been a, like a while since we've had a flower. So maybe I'll try fitting a sort of smaller one there. I think I'm just gonna have to do it one round of echoes in there because I don't think I was gonna be able to go out and then back in and then back out. I don't think I could have fit three passes, so I just did one. And I could at least get the echo on that side. And then maybe back to the spirals. And here's another, here's another open spot. What should I do there? Maybe I'll just pull this next spiral over here. And I'll just end it where it needs to end. I'm sure getting a lot of spirals here, so why don't I switch to leaves? I'm getting a little confused now about which way I'm which way I'm leading. So I'm just gonna stop for a second and think. That's okay. You're allowed to do that. So I'm here and I wanna be going. Maybe I'll just like flow around the outside there. So I'm just gonna say that this leaf is leading off this way, and then that one's leading off that way. Great. Back in action. Maybe this is a good time to put in one of these kind of drop flowers. One, two, three drops. These are the sort of melty drops that are leaning out over the edge and looking really graceful. Oh, I can go off the edge. I can put a part of a spiral here. Maybe I'll come back on with my leaves and then switch to spirals again. Okay, what haven't I done for a while? Maybe one of these. I'll leave space for three, going out and then in and then out. And I'm just going to make sure I fill in that whole space on my way back out because I don't know how I would get back in there to fill it up otherwise. Well, do you like how this is going? Is this like, is, does this design work for you? Do you think you could like use it on the right quills? I see a, I see a comment. Leaves are hard for me when I try to make more than two or three in sequence. My brain rebels and they go lumpy. Oh, maybe you could send a picture to me of what you mean by lumpy. I'm trying to imagine. Um... But what would I say? Are you talking about, here's a question. Are you talking about, Julie, when you uh, draw them or when you're stitching them? Because I think that there is a difference in how I would respond. I think, let, did she say draw? 
This is when I try to make more than two or three in sequence. Because if it's when you're stitching, um, I would say one of your hands, in my case my right hand, because I'm right-handed, is better at um, at controlling, at, you know, at fine movements than the other. And so it, it would be really normal, especially when you're starting off for things like leaves and feathers and anything that has like a right side and a left side for one of those signs to be better, one of those sides to be done better, smoother, and the other side to look a little wacky. And um, I know that if you keep doing it, that will get better. More when you are drawing. Okay, that's so interesting. Let me think, I really would love to see a picture of what you mean by lumpy, but I would say um, maybe just embrace that lumpiness. Mother Nature has a lot of different types of leaves, and if those are the types of leaves that you draw, you're probably drawing them consistently, and that means it's your design, it's your handwriting. And as you do more of it, probably that will start to smooth out, but you're probably just going to have to cover like, you know, three entire sheets of papers of leaves. I wonder if though this is the kind of design that would be great for you because you can do like three leaves and then switch your design, right? Like you don't have to, you don't have to keep drawing leaves. So as soon as they get lumpy, boom, that means you switch to a flower or the spirals. So you can still get those like, those nice starting leaves that you like and then just, you know, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Maybe, maybe this is the solution to the lumpy leaf problem, but definitely send me a picture because I'm curious what you mean. Okay, I'm gonna draw a little bit more of that because I see that a few more people have joined. So what we're doing is we're combining these flowers that we've learned how to do previously, these climbing spirals, these climbing leaves, and this little three drop flowers into just an all over, not premeditated design. So right here I'm seeing I'm up against some of these spirals and we recently had some leaves in one of these so maybe it's time for another one of these guys a drop a drop and a drop am i feeling that and now i'm going to go ahead and put some more leaves in there and i think i kind of ultimately want to go this way so i'm just going to tuck one leaf up here right here and we'll just go right off the edge there and then come back on and then maybe switch to the spirals I'm just gonna pop one spiral right in there time for another flower feel like a leaf even though we just recently did them I want that leaf to fill up all that space and we'll go for another one of these so all my eye is really doing when I'm moving around the space is going what have what what's not nearby and whatever's not nearby is what I put in that space my leaves end up looking like Maui hooks how sweet <laughs> I do know what you're talking about when you say that you got leaves that look like this. <laughs> um, so that means you're probably really good at swirls. That means your brain is like got swirls and it likes swirls. And so you're gonna have to teach your brain that there are things other than swirls in the in the in the world. And how could you do that? Well, I would say start by just drawing some like arcs. Can you see that? Kind of. It's got comments over it. But draw some arcs, just like a half circle, or like a part of a circle, and then a part of a circle back. And there's no, there's no flow to that. I think that ultimately the fact that your leaves curve is a sign that you're good at fluidity, and good at fluid designs. You just need to train your brain for the the times where you want things to be to be going in one direction. And the petals I draw look like fat fingers. I'm having a harder time imagining what that means, but it's a very funny description. <laughs> Okay, well, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. I hope you enjoyed seeing this design grow today. Um, if you have not, if you haven't been with me before now, you can go back and find the videos for how to do these climbing leaves and spirals, for how to do these echo flowers. And in the climbing leaves and spirals, we've also got these little drop-shaped flowers. Um, 
So those two lessons, the climbing designs and the echo flowers will give you everything you need to know to put together this. But again, if it's feeling complicated, just go back and draw one design at a time, right? Just draw one of the climbing designs and put a flower occasionally, or just draw the echo flowers, like get used to them individually. Last thing I want to say here is that that little flower, that little drop flower that we did, that can be its own design all by its own. We did it in the um, we did it in the climbing designs lesson, but it's really versatile and it's in my book step by step free motion quilting. But basically, if you've got those three drops, you can echo them until you want to start another one. It could even be four drops if you want. Right, echo them once or twice to get you where you want to go next. This design works really fast, but it also kind of has that like the wow factor of feathers without needing to get too fussy and make actual feathers. And I would say if you get good at this design and you like feathers, um, I'm just going to kind of come back on here. If you like feathers and you get good at this design, my guess is that your feathers will get better too. Because it's got a lot of the same flow. Oh, look at this situation I created for myself here. What would you do? I'm going to probably say going out like this. Yeah, that's all right. Could be better. I could be watching out more. Yeah, so that's one to get to know on its own too. And you'll get uh, more adept at filling in the space. It does kind of look like a ginkgo leaf. I love that. Yeah, echo those babies. Echo. Yeah, that's okay. I see. So, so gift said echo. She's so smart. That's what I should have done over here. Look. Instead of my weird little, my weird little bloom that I did. That's what we talked about earlier this week. Could have echoed out of that problem and then gone on to something else. I like that solution better. Thank 